Some of the most powerful computers in a small form factor are just around the corner. I was just at CES and I was able to hold three of these models in my hand. I couldn't run anything on them yet, but hopefully that's coming very soon. For now, we have some specs and we have our dreams. First up, I'm really excited about this one. See, I'm, I'm holding it in my hand, sort of. It's a piece of Project Digits by NVIDIA was announced. This is NVIDIA's latest AI supercomputer. This is supposed to be a groundbreaking personal AI supercomputer in a tiny little box that brings you server level AI processing right to your desk. And this is built around the new GB10 Grace Blackwell super chip. It can deliver up to one petaflop of AI performance at FP4 precision. The GB10 super chip integrates NVIDIA's latest generation CUDA cores and fifth generation Tensor cores. And it's got a high performance Grace CPU with 20 power efficient ARM-based cores. ARM-based cores and ARM-adjacent cores are coming for us. We already have some that are here. We got the Mac Mini. Oh, this is the Zero case. It's pretty cool. And this is the fun part right here, the power switch. We got uh, things like the NVIDIA Jetson, a powerful little mini computer that's even smaller than the Mac Mini. This thing runs AI locally right here for 249 bucks. But you know what's not 249 bucks? NVIDIA digits. That's supposed to be $3,000. So it's not for everybody, okay? But it's gonna be powerful. It can do up to 200 billion parameter models on it. It's got 128 gigs of RAM. You can link up two digit systems together and tackle the 405 billion parameter Llama model, for example, or DeepSeek, a quantized version of DeepSeek. So a lot of people are gonna be doing personalized AI here, especially because they don't wanna send their personal data to someone else who knows where it's going but if you're running it locally then it's staying local which is what a lot of people want to be doing that's why this is so important now so this is going to be ready for developers that are trying to do ai it's going to be compact ready to use and scalable as well the only issue is three thousand dollars so it's going to be limited audience only and it's going to be overkill for lightweight or general purpose development tasks so if you're doing anything other than heavy ai duties then this is probably not for you also, there might be a little bit of a learning curve. This uh, Jetson Nano took me quite a bit of time to set up. For somebody that's just starting out, that's probably gonna be too much of a hassle. Something like Olama with a Mac Mini would be probably the easiest thing to do. So as impressive as NVIDIA Digits is, let's face it, it's not exactly a computer you casually just walk in and buy unless you're ready to mortgage your house or, or you're building Skynet, for example. But what if you want some power without breaking the bank? Well, Geekom has just announced the QS1. This is gonna be a budget-friendly contender that's punching well above its weight class. And this is one of the ones that I got to see at CES. I stopped by Geekom's booth. So because the Qualcomm chips are so small and energy efficient, you can get them into tiny little mini PCs like this one from Geekom right over here. And this is called the QS1 Pro. Now the same chassis here, which is ridiculously small, they also offer it with an AMD chip right here. This is called the A6, which is a brand new model that's coming out shortly. But the difference is with the Qualcomm XLE chip, it has a fingerprint reader and it has little microphone holes. So it can be qualified as a Copilot Plus PC. They also have one, not on display here, but it's called the GT13 Pro and it comes in the exact same chassis. So it'd be really interesting to compare the Qualcomm X Elite, the AMD Ryzen 6800H, which is in their A6, and the Intel version, which is in their GT13 Pro, all side by side to see which chip is the ultimate winner in this form factor. Geekom's QS1 is gonna be the first mini PC with the Snapdragon X Elite processor featuring 12 Orion cores at four gigahertz each, supporting up to 64 gigabytes of LPDDR5 and up to two terabytes of PCIe4 storage. And this thing is tiny. It is actually smaller than the Mac mini. I had it in my hand, it was tiny. The mini PC has robust connectivity, including Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, USB 4.0, 
2.0, HDMI 2.0, Display Port 1.4, and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. So yeah, this is a good machine for software developers. In fact, if you're wondering whether Snapdragon X Elite is good for you as a software developer, I did a whole video on taking this little machine. This is the Dell XPS 13 with a Snapdragon X Elite chip inside. I spent a whole week traveling with that thing, doing developer related tasks, mobile development, .NET development. I break down more in the other video. I'll link to that down below in case you're interested. And what's more is that the Geekcom is going to be affordable. We don't know exactly the price yet that it's going to be, but it's definitely going to be not $3,000. You'll be able to use Qualcomm's AI hub to do AI processing on it if AI is what you're into. But I would say that that machine is probably good for things like web development, .NET development, and general purpose use as well. Now, there's still limits to what you can do with Windows for ARM. There is going to be some potential x86 software compatibility issues. You're going to have to make sure that your particular set of software will run on this architecture. So make sure you're aware of that. So the Geekcom QS1 Pro and the A6, they're solid reminders that small doesn't mean weak. Let's talk about a mini PC that's got the entire tech world buzzing, rather the chip. And it's got a name that's kind of hard to pronounce. It's kind of out of a sci-fi blockbuster, the Strix Halo. This is the new Strix Halo from AMD, and that's what I'm gonna call it, all right? GMK Tech has announced plans to release this soon, and it's gonna have the AMD Ryzen AI Max 395 Plus. A lot of people are looking forward to this chip because it's gonna be really powerful. So this chip is gonna have 16 Zen 5 cores, 32 threads, and peak clock speeds of 5.1 gigahertz, paired with a powerful RDNA 3.5 based GPU, and can do up to 256 gigabit per second of LPDDR5X memory bandwidth. Yeah, that's a big deal, especially if you're doing AI workloads. This is simply the most advanced mobile x86 processor ever created, period. It also is going to have a 50 tops NPU. This chip is supposed to give you exceptional multi-core performance for heavy computations. It's going to have superior integrated graphics for GPU accelerated tasks and that high speed memory. It's going to be smooth sailing. Can't wait to try that box. I don't have it in my hands yet, but hopefully sometime later when it comes out. Now there are some things to watch out for because this chip is so brand new, we don't know what the real world performance of it's gonna be. So we'll see. It's gonna be in a tiny package, right? GMK Tech makes little small PCs, mini PCs, very small. So the thermal challenges in compact setups like that uh, need to be taken care of very carefully. GMK Tech has not yet announced the release date of this mini PC or the price yet. So this chip has everybody excited, right? But there are a couple machines coming out with chips that have already proved both efficient and highly performant. And these are Lenovo Snapdragon X Elite powered mini PCs. They got two of them. I'm actually really excited about this whole trend of going to uh, Windows for ARM. And I saw these two Lenovo machines up close. I held them, they're very small. One is the Think Center Neo and it's tailored for business users. The Neo features the eight core Snapdragon X Plus processor with up to 16 gigabytes of LPDDR r5 memory and flexible storage so this was more for businesses needing a reliable efficient system for productivity tasks yes you can use it as a software developer but it might be a little bit limiting the idea center mini x steps things up a little bit with a snapdragon x plus processor 32 gigs of ram and up to one terabyte of storage making it more versatile machine for more demanding workloads including software development and both of them are going to give you really energy efficient processors with good performance they're going to have wi-fi seven multiple usb ports and they're going to cover most software development needs now i don't have these in hand yet and i haven't tested them out but if you are interested let me know down in the comments below maybe i'll grab a couple test them out for you and again you got to be mindful in your own workloads are you going to have compatibility challenges most people will probably not have them but there's still going to be that concern so make sure you're covered with your software and your software can run on arm hardware natively or it can run under emulation pretty well and if you don't know what i'm talking about i've made lots of videos on how prism emulation works on on the Snapdragon platform. Think Center Neo starts at 849 and the Idea Center starts at 659 and both are expected pretty early in 2025. So from a developer's perspective, 2025 is shaping up to be a fascinating year for compact computing. I really can't wait until we can just have a computer in the pocket and that's all we need.
Can't wait for that day. But uh, what do we got? We got NVIDIA Digits, powerhouse for AI, Geekcom QS1 Pro, budget-friendly performance and super efficient, GMK Tech Mini PC with Strix Halo, high performance, and Lenovo Snapdragon-powered options. They deliver proven efficiency and versatility. So which one of these would you put on your desk? Let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to see how these perform in the real world. I'll throw my battery. I've tested them as usual. Make sure you don't miss that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.